part of a video series discussing some of the insider traits found within the gaming world, as well as some ways we can protect ourselves and others from the potential dangers that online gaming can bring. So this is Brad. He is a technology director and an esports coach for the last five years. Um, he is going to share a little bit about his experiences with us. So tell me about your experiences um, that you've noticed as an esports coach, as far as you know, what you've experienced with the, the youth that you've engaged with, as well as the parents, some lessons you've learned, some struggles you've had. So we started esports um, at our school five years ago in order to give um, youth an outlet um, where you might be a student who wouldn't have a normal outlet in school, whether that be band or art, uh, drama or sports. Um, we wanted to give kids an avenue to shine in what they liked to do. So we put some teams together and started to compete uh, in our local league. Great. And how many local teams do you guys compete with? Is it really a growing community? Well, yes. Um, so we started with, I'm going to guess, somewhere around 50 teams. I, I don't remember my history of the league uh, that well, but we're up to over 250 teams this year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's across the state? That is across the state. Okay. So you play with teams across the state, not just in our local community? Uh, all over the state. So where a normal sport team at the high school or even the middle school level uh, would play in a league with, uh, you know, five to ten different teams in the local area, because again, you don't have to travel. Um, with esports, you don't have to travel. So we could play teams from Columbus or Akron or, you know, all the way to the Indiana border. Um, and there are schools all the way out there that compete in our league that way. Wow. Do the kids that are playing, do they get to know some of those kids from across the state or is there not as much engagement as far as building camaraderie, friendships, that kind of thing? There really isn't a lot of that. Um, you might know some kids uh, from your local school if you play uh, on a regular sport team. Um, but again, because our kids are so far away and because the schools are so diverse, we might be playing a school right down the street. Or again, we may be playing a school, you know, two and a half hour drive away. Um, so there really isn't a lot of interaction yet. No, and, and not even with those, those local um, teams. Is there anything that you've, as a coach over the years... Um had to really work with your teammates on? For our kids, again, there is um, this element of, you know, I've never played with a team. I've never um, had to, you know, take a turn or use somebody else's strengths or even listen to instruction. Um, so some of these kids can come from varied backgrounds. Um, and, you know, it was, it was our hope that providing this kind of competition for these kinds of kids um, would give them the same kind of um, bolstering um, and character development that uh, a regular sport team player would get. Esports is still growing. Um, it's pretty popular in um, other countries, especially Asian countries, um, where you actually know the players. Uh, well enough to um, become a fan um, of what they do, how they play, the games they play, the, their play style. So what have you noticed with some of your returning players over the years as far as, you know, did some of those skills that you were trying to build with them, did you see them carry over into year two and year three and how did that work? Absolutely. Yeah, we've had a lot of kids come back over the years to bring their skills with them and pass them on to other players. Absolutely. Absolutely. So our teams are relatively young. They're middle school age, but they go all the way up to high school. Some of those kids have returned year after year to come back um, and play again. So yeah, there have been leadership positions that have come up where, um, you know, they have experience playing a particular school um, and they you know some strengths and weaknesses. So how do we achieve safer, more responsible gaming? First, talk, talk, talk. Talk to your kids. Make sure they know what your values are. Make sure that you've got some limits and they know what those are. Two, educate your kids on just how to be safe, who they should be talking to and, and when and why. 
Um, set some limits, absolutely. Um, but again, just be involved with your kids so that you have your thumb on exactly what their lives are doing. And I think that's the best advice of all. Kids really still need that. So I've included in the description of this video some ideas of some conversation topics that you could have with your children to get those, those conversations going. Hi, so we have Brad here with us today. Um, he's going to tell us a little bit about eSports. So go ahead, Brad. <laughs> do, 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 the Brad and Jenny show. <laughs> I don't know how many viewers we would have on that show. That would be a sweet show. 